It's time for Damien on Design with Damien Farrell, local architect with Damien Farrell Design Group. Damien, there is an article out in U.S. News from How Millennials Could Be Housing Heroes is the title of it. Right. Interesting, this generation of millennials and what they could be doing to design and the process of it in the future. I, I, I see a big impact coming when I study this. I, you and I are both really fascinated by this whole arena of design and home design. Mm -hmm. And as I think about it and I read and set the context for the millennials, I can't help feel, but feel that there is some change that has to happen and change that's going to come about in the stuff that we are used to buying every day and accessing every day. Well, you know, we were talking a couple of episodes ago here on 1290 WLBY with you about how the baby boomer generation, I think that many builders out there are finally getting on board with the fact that there are multi-generational right. uh, families now. There are needs of uh, multiple master suites, yes. a need to have ADA compliant, right. uh, to have houses that we can actually grow old in. I hadn't thought about it from the other direction, from the younger people. Yeah. Well, and there are two... So if we put this in context, this is one of the largest generations or one of the largest groups that we will have ever had in this country, right? So right now, in 2015, so this is a group that's... The definition changes slightly, but essentially 18 to 33 years old, okay. give or take in there. So, so my children's age, for uh -huh. instance. Um, they represent 27% of the population today here in the U.S. in 2015. That's 86 million millennials. That's very big. So that will begin to surpass the volume, if you will, or the size of the baby boomers quite shortly. Mm -hmm. And so... And, and they've got a set of values that are coming, that they've been shaped by technology, by the depression, or the recession, I should say, the Great Recession, right? Well, they've been shaped in certain ways. And so what the, the, the gurus are predicting is that they are going to come out of this as their buying power increases, as uh, mortgages do become more accessible to mm -hmm. them, that they are going to be looking for quality and not quantity. They're not going to be looking for the size. Um, so they're going to be looking for smaller less expensive, but good quality. Well, the same thing is going on right now then with the baby boomers, who in the downsizing trend and wanting to stay at home for longer periods of time are essentially doing the same thing. That's a so good the, point. So there's this kind of convergence, but from two different directions, right? right? So the, you know, the, 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 the millennials have come out of this terrible time. We've got this, this, this uh, college debt, of, which now reached a trillion dollars, all right? Mm -hmm. And it's been talked about, but who knows what that impact's going to be. So that is enormous. During the Great Recession, we saw more than, somewhere between, they predict, somewhere between three or four million more millennials living at home during that period than we have had in the past. How is that impacting this then? So what's, and then, and then the flip side of that, so in 2014, we saw a 60% growth in job opportunities mm -hmm. for the millennials. All right. So... All of these things are coming together, and, and everyone's trying to make their predictions okay. about trends, about what this is going to mean. What they do know is the millennial generation has been called the generation of choice. They've, been, they've grown up with a tremendous amount of choice. They've grown up with this absolute blossoming and this, this explosion of technology, and they're accustomed to that. They like experience. They like the experience of participating in stuff. So... Take, for example, a company like Tom Shoes, all right? You go online and order one pair of shoes, they donate another pair of shoes, uh -huh. all right? So you've got, I think, in the region of 200,000 pairs of shoes being donated, all right? So companies like that where, well, you can go on, design your own T-shirt, and then through a public voting process, um, <laughs> the certain T-shirts are selected to be printed and sold. Uh -huh. So it's, there's this engagement and this level of customization that this generation is accustomed to. All right, so how's that going to impact where they live? Well, so we know right now it's hard for them to get mortgages. So the rental, the apartment, um, the rental house, apartment, and so on, mm -hmm. I think that's going to continue to be very strong, and so does everyone else. So as I think about that, you know, look at our apartment stock around this town here in Ann Arbor, yeah. the college town. Pretty poor, right? It is. I mean, 20, 30, 40 years old mm -hmm. stuff, right? And very run-of-the-mill, small windows, you know, mm -hmm. very, you know, very generic kitchens. Not the right? amenities you just painted for what the no, millennials want. No, not at all, right? Yeah. So, you know, as I start to think about this, and I think about things like modularity and 
factory built and components and you start to apply kind of the IKEA thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, imagine if you could rent an apartment where, yes, your bathroom obviously is locked in and your kitchen is locked in to a certain extent. But what if your, what if the bedroom area, for instance, was a large space? And if I signed a two or a three year lease, mm -hmm. I had the ability to take that space and maybe it comes with one bedroom and then there's a flex space. What if I'm a single person or a couple and maybe in that process I'm starting a family? What if I could take that other bedroom and actually break it into two spaces mm. for the period of my lease? So what if my mod modular wall system was a plug and play system that <laughs> I as the landlord kept in a warehouse in the same way that landlords keep stocks of mattresses and beds and all of that stuff? Sure. Okay, so just expand that thinking. So what if I could take that other bedroom and, and Part of it is a nursery and part of it is a little study. Did you call that a plug and play? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, so, and, and that I get from, there is a company called DIRT, D-I-R-T-T. -T. Uh -huh. Started in Canada, now working and operating in the U.S. We have actually worked with them. And they make demountable, literally plug and play wall panels. Hmm. And, you, and they are very thin, made out of aluminum extrusions. But they have very good sound attenuation. They're very flexible. So you can go online, literally, if you're working with DIRT, you will go online, you'll use their software, it's called ICE, ICE, and you will design, in this case, your office um, layout, but they're actually getting into multifamily, so this is, I don't think I'm reaching too far here. Mm -hmm. you, you do your layout working with one of their consultants, you pick your finishes, you pick your panels, so you know, glass or a solid finish or mirror, um, you can get TV built into it, for instance, because our screens are so thin now, oh, neat. you can get sliding doors, you know, barn style doors. Mm -hmm. um, that goes straight to the factory. And I was down in Phoenix, and I went to the factory, and I saw this happen. Ah. So there's no, so you and I could sit here, design a layout for, our, for an apartment, send that straight to Phoenix. That, those pieces would be cut and assembled right there on the floor, and then shipped out. Hmm. So if I designed my apartment, for instance, on a three-foot module or a four-foot module, and, yeah, it limits in some ways, but what if I could provide my tenant that kind of flexibility. Because they want choice. They want choice. Hmm. How interesting. Right. So there's an application. I think furniture is going to have to head more and more. So well, another thing I found out, the millennials are likely to change careers three to five times in their lifespan, unlike our generation, right. baby boom and so on. So that to me means if, 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 but they've also expressed this very, very high desire to own. That is probably one of the major priorities is to own a home. But if they're going to be moving around, what does that mean to them, right? We can't predict the financial market. We can't predict the change in values. Mm -hmm. But if I'm doing that, then surely I'm going to be looking for things that are modular, that I can replace if they wear out, things that I can transport fairly easily, mm -hmm. things I can take up and down stairs fairly easily as well. It's a generation two that I don't think have some of the design values, if you will. Let's take a company like, if you and I think of Baker Furniture, Hendred on Furniture, right. what do we, very heavy, yeah. very ornate stuff. That had an era when we bought a house and we lived in that house forever, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's changing. I think, you know, I think of faucet design, take mm -hmm. that as an example. So right now, as you know, you and Dean are both building homes. Right. You can go out there and there is so much available, right? I mean, it's mind boggling. Mm -hmm. but, but you can only buy that particular thing. Right. Yes, you can get it in five or six different finishes, mm -hmm. and yes, there are lots of different style. But what if I, as a manufacturer, was able to give you the option to go online and pick the components and design your own and customize your own? So think of what Mini did. All right, Design your own Mini. They started that whole trend. Right. Go online, build your Mini. Order it online, go pick it up at the showroom. Mm -hmm. All right. And, I mean, that's the recipe for success for them. And many of the other auto manufacturers are doing the same thing. What if I could take that and do that with some of those components? Furniture with whatever. What if fridges come in modules? Oh, how would you do that with a fridge? What if it's 24 inches wide and 24 inches high? Okay. And I can build a tall fridge out of four of those, two and two above. One of them's a freezer. One of them, I happen to be a, I'm living on my own. I, I'm, a, I'm a beer connoisseur. <laughs> All right. He I'm doesn't. a wine connoisseur. He doesn't, but <laughs> he's imagining if he were. <laughs> I think that I think companies like Viking, um, all the very high-end stove manufacturers. I think they got to watch out. I think they got to take a long, really? hard look. Well, because those things became a status symbol. 
in the era before 2008. Is this generation, do they not want No, that's what I'm gathering. Symbols? They don't want the status symbols. Wow. They, talking, they, about, talking about millennials here on our Damien on Design on the Lucy Ann Land Show with Damien Farrell and what kinds of trends will come out of this generation because of it. I love the fact that in some ways it mirrors what the older generation, the baby boomers, are going through as well. Yes. I just want to bring this up. I want to get yeah. your opinion on this. Uh, Governor Rick Snyder. Yes. Uh, he recently was laid up. Yes. Uh, because he um, had had, a uh, and prior to that had been running on a beach in Florida and uh, twisted his tendon or whatever. Yes. And now he, blood clot. He was in the hospital for a few days. I am shocked that while he was in the hospital, it's announced that they buy this condo in downtown Ann Arbor on the yes. East Street, multi-level condo above, uh, it's an older historic condo. They're renovating the top floor, uh, taking a, a, a person who's an historic architect who did some work up on the um, Actually, someone, Island. someone who's been on our show. Oh, really? Yeah, I didn't know that. Gene Hopkins. Oh, wow, yes. there you go. Yes. Mm -hmm. How, and I don't know if there's an elevator in there, but how is it someone who now has a better appreciation for what it's like to be laid up and... I think he was using one of those knee boards to, yeah, to get around to get around. Buying something like that. I and have to know that unit because that was that was a unit that was designed and owned by and, and one of my colleagues, Carl Lukenbach. Oh. So I know the unit and actually it's in that instance primarily living on one floor with some stairs. Yes, there are stairs. I don't know how they're renovating. I, I, I haven't talked to Gene at all to mm -hmm. find out whether they are doing things like adding an elevator and so on. They have younger kids. So I think that, and I know the unit, it's, it's, a, it's stunning. It's a beautiful big space, you know, it runs from the alleyway all the way through to Main Street, so the light pours into it. Mm -hmm. It called it an incredible job designing that. Mm -hmm. So I think the question is a really good one, though, in general. And what I'm seeing in design is almost all of our clients saying, what if? And so we are allocating space for elevators for the future. Already they've become... They've become more of a lift than an elevator, yeah. for, you know. So that that industry has also really adapted very well mm -hmm. to design demand. It's no longer a big cost item; it's something that can be retrofitted very easily mm -hmm. if you allow for it. So perhaps there is some planning that has gone into into that unit. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I, years ago I snapped my Achilles tendon as well and spent and developed blood clots and had some of the same oh, issues. Just like, oh, just wow. like it, and actually ended up spending about three months in a wheelchair and learned a. A, a very, uh, very clear-cut appreciation mm -hmm. for accessibility issues. Right. And in fact, I actually had to give up my office in downtown Ann Arbor because of getting to and from in the winter time. Wow. Because while I was on crutches, I actually slipped and took a nasty tumble. And oh. not no one's fault, other than it's just yeah. accessibility is terribly important. Right. It's an older building, so. You know, I'm very acute, very acutely aware of some of this stuff. When we talk about building up our downtowns and who's going to be living down yeah. there, and, and even older people want to kind of be yeah. the heart of the town. Yeah, and the, and the millennial draw, too, is more to the urban centers. So even though yeah. towns like Ann Arbor, Boulder, some of the other college towns are terribly popular because they offer so much in choice, again, mm -hmm. choice and design and experience. Right. I mean, living in Ann Arbor is an incredible experience if you choose to operate that or choose to right. indulge in it. Um, but, but it really, the major centers are going to draw the millennials closer because that is where the choice is. Mm. So there are just a lot of interesting design challenges coming up. I think those of us involved in multifamily design, multifamily construction and design, um, we're going to have to think very hard. I think the game's changing, and I, I think that's wonderful. Um, I think that this, you know, what design, what we provide, how we bring more light in the the... The, as we've talked about before, the awareness of green and energy consumption is huge. Mm -hmm. Right, It's just now, it's all across the board. My space I'm taking, the space I'm buying, or building, leasing, it needs to be green, needs to be healthy, mm -hmm. and I'm very concerned about what it's going to cost me to operate it. Um, yes, you as the landlord, um, you're simply passing these costs on, but you know what, I now care. So with the onslaught of, te of technology and the ability to control things from your from your phone, from your uh, tablet, this is becoming de facto part of life for millennials. We do have a client, for instance, recently we just finished a project. He literally controls his home on a daily basis from his telephone. All right, so depending on when the kids are coming home, when, when they are coming home for dinner and so on, he literally adjusts things in his house to manage his energy consumption. So he can turn on outside lights. He can open garage doors and close them before he even gets within range. He can... Um, 
turn, you know, you can, you can um, manage this heating and cooling. Right. Um, Are we going to see more of that built into yeah, future yeah, home design yeah. rather than something you purchase after the yeah, fact? Yeah, I think... I think Apartment owners are going to have to start thinking about systems like Nest. Yeah. Um, you know where you are manage you are you are matching not just the technology but also the looks and the design mm -hmm. to things like Apple. Right. I mean, go into any iPhone or any Apple store. That's that's the bar now. Mm -hmm. That's where the millennials are. They are enjoying that experience. They are customizing everything they do. They are buying um, Burberry, a name that you and I think of as. It's called it old-fashioned traditional yes. coats, right? Right. Burberry, 58% of their sales now in the millennial market are generated from their in-store tablets. Really? Wow. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So, so we'll go to the store and see all the stuff uh -huh. and not necessarily interact with any salespeople and we'll do it there in the store on the, on the tablet because we're so accustomed to that. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, we don't mind if we don't take it home right now. How is all of this going to add to the cost, though? As, as a builder yourself, as you look mm -hmm. at multi-family type of units, mm -hmm. um, uh, what, how on earth can you We're do this to, cost effectively? Yeah, that's, I, you've, you've nailed it. That's exactly what it's going to be because financing is harder to get right now. Mm -hmm. It's cheap when you get it, right? That's great, but it's very difficult to get it. Okay. Uh, all this debt and rising costs. Building costs have not gone down or leveled out at all. I think we're going to have to look to modularity, to components that can be assembled um, in either in factories or in multiple um, pieces that can then be put together and customized. All right. Is it easier to get that financing if you build some component of affordable housing into the units? It, yes. Well, that's a good question. That is really being driven a lot by the zoning ordinances. Mm. So in most cities, you can get additional density on your land if you provide a certain percentage of affordable housing. That is becoming very popular, and, and almost every project you read about now all across the country has that in it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's great. And it's not always just affordable um, by formula. So they are so micro units, for instance, you know, lowering the size, lowering the cost, just making it more affordable in terms of what in its competition, if you will. Right. So it's still market rate, but still reachable. I think that we're really going to have to address that mm -hmm. um, with the way we design. Um, you know, things like heating and cooling systems have become more sophisticated and smaller and more efficient. That works to our benefit. So things like ducts and things that take up space when we're designing. Um, as we can split these systems up into smaller components, that's all good and that's all working in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Damien, uh, for millennials who want to stay near the center of town, yeah. um, there's not much land to be doing what you're talking about. No, there isn't. Are we talking about retrofitting? No, I think, I think that's where this is, that's got to be out there. You know, I don't see how we avoid that. Mm -hmm. I think the smart apartment complex owners have got to be looking at their stock and saying, okay, so I'm full right now, but how am I going to maintain my competitiveness? You know, if I may say, uh, McKinley, I think, has done a tremendous job. Yeah. I don't know about internally with the apartments, but just from the looks of them on the yeah. outside, they have really spruced up their stock, which goes all the way back, I think, to the 70s here. Absolutely. Town. All the way back to complexes like Roundtree, right, Glencoe yeah. Hills. You're absolutely right. If you, I, I think back to when I arrived in this country, actually lived in one of their complexes, the one up on Pauline. Mm -hmm. And so from then to now, flowers everywhere, nice yeah. signage, yeah. clean. I really commend them. They've done a tremendous job. I agree job. with you. They've really mm -hmm. upped the ante and raised the bar mm -hmm. in the aesthetics. Yes. And I'm sure that must translate into all sorts of good things for them. I mean, mm -hmm. Alvarez is a great friend of ours, a yeah. very you know, personal friend. Um, I'm just in awe at what they are doing. Mm -hmm. But I think it's going to be an interesting period ahead for everyone with um, how we start to adapt. I don't think we can adopt a status quo um, thing. So um, you know, even though some of the demands are the same, people want to live in houses, they want to own them, mm -hmm. it's different. It's different. We're seeing it in our practice. I see the trend too. You know, there was mm -hmm. a time we would start four to six what I would call super homes, if you will, um, a year. You know, we've only got two or three new homes in the office right now, and mm -hmm. they're all small, mm -hmm. compact, uh, you know, very minimal design. Mm -hmm. um, it's not about the square footage anymore. 
Amazing. Yeah. The trends in the housing industry yeah. and how they are being driven by the particular wants, needs, desires of the millennials, yeah. of the baby boomer generation. Yeah. And really, if you're in the industry, if you're a builder or designer, you have to be in tune with that. I agree. I agree. Because the people who are making it, the companies that are doing it, they really understand this group of people. They understand the desire for choice, customization, and experience. Yeah. That's what they're looking for. And they understand the the elevation of social consciousness. Mm -hmm. I want to be part of something, and I want to be part of a community, and I want to give back. Uh, we forced the issue ourselves with the house I'm building, and you know yeah. this well because uh, you've been peeking in on, on the project for me. Uh, I was hearing in the beginning, we're not a custom builder. We're not a custom builder. Yeah. And while we understood that going in, we forced them to be somewhat of a custom, custom builder. builder. And now they're looking at what we're building. They're saying, we've got people interested in two master suites. We've got people interested now in ranch houses that maybe aren't so ranch-like. Yeah. Um, and I think you're going to see more and more of that in the future. Yeah, so. yeah I think the production part of it has to shift yes. into a different kind of production. Yes. Yeah. I mean, you, these builders have to make money, obviously, yes, but absolutely. you've got to provide what yeah. what your, your yeah. clients want, yeah. too. So. Yeah. Great talking with you. Thank Thanks. you. Damien uh, Farrell is a local architect with Damien Farrell Design Group. You can go online to dfdgonline.com. Check out his work. It's absolutely gorgeous. And uh, listen each Saturday here on the Lucianne Lance Show for Damien on Design. You, this is Ann Arbor's Talk Station, 1290 WLBY.